Welcome. This video is going to work through the classwork problems involving volumes of revolution. Um, I plan to go over a couple of them from the binder, pages 215 and 216. And here we go. So we'll start with problem two. And in problem two, we have a whole bunch of scenarios, but in each of the scenarios, we have the same bounded area that we are going to rotate. And that is the area bounded by the line y equals 2x, the line y equals 0, and the line x equals 3. Okay, so in the first part, we are rotating this about the x-axis. So let's draw our region and let's rotate it. So here we go. Okay, we've got the line y equals 2x, looks something like this. Then we have the horizontal line, y equals 0. And the vertical line, x equals 3. Okay. So now, if we're going to go about rotating, here's our two-dimensional shaded region right here. What we now want to do is we want to take that and we want to rotate it around the x-axis. So, as we've talked about before, let's draw our mirror image using the um, line of rotation sort of as our reflection point or our reflection axis. So now, this becomes a two-dimensional representation of the three-dimensional solid. If we go in and we take a cut of this solid, we notice that each cut is a circle, and it's a solid circle. We want to get the area of one of these circles, so we'll get the radius. So we'll go out from the center up to the top of the circle, and that length, we started at 2x, we go down to 0, so that radius is 2x. So when it's time to do our volume, the area of one circle is pi times 2x squared. So the volume would be the integral from 0 to 3 of 4x squared dx. And you can go into your calculator, you can type that in, and you get 36x. Again, for a lot of these, I'm not as much concerned with you being able to do the integration by hand. The setup the, it is really where it, the challenge is. So I'll let you use your calculator for most, but not all, of these problems. Okay, For right now, I'll let you use your calculator. Um, just set them up. Just be prepared that on a test or on the AP exam, you may still have to actually do the integration. Now if we look at another one, same situation except now we're going to rotate it around the line y equals 6. Alright, so we'll draw our picture again. Okay, so here's the line y equals 2x. Here's the line y equals 0. Here's the line x equals 3. And now we're going to rotate it about the line y equals 6. So that's going to be right here. Okay, so again, we will draw our reflections. And notice how I'm color coding everything so I can really see each of my lines. Not only if I were you would I color code things, but I'd also label equations. So I know that's y equals 2x, I know that's y equals 0, and x equals 3. Okay, so again, if we are rotating on this line, y equals 6, the solid region is highlighted here. Okay. So it's almost like the opposite of a funnel. The funnel here is kind of like the white space. The cone is kind of the white space. Everything that's around the cone would be solid. 
which means if we go in and we do a cut and we connect yellow to yellow and black to black, we now see that our cut is not a disc anymore, but it's a washer. It's solid around the outside, but then there's a hole in the middle. So as we've talked about before, we need to get our different um, um, we need to get our different radii. So if we want to get the radius of the larger circle from yellow to or from the the line of rotation to the yellow, we would start at six and we go down to zero. So that means the big radius for every one of these circles is six. Now if we want to calculate the radius from the center to the black, we start at y equals 6, we stop at y equals 2x. So we're using that same idea that we have did for area between two curves, except now we're thinking of it more as a distance between two curves. And our little radius would be 6, that's the top line, the line of rotation, minus 2x. Okay. So to get our volume, well, essentially, to get the area of one of these washers, we would take the area of the bigger circle, so pi times 6 squared. We'd subtract from it pi times the quantity 6 minus 2x squared, and that would get me the area of just one circle, the circle that I drew there. I want to accumulate all of the washers from 0 to 3, so I have to sum them up, and in calculus, we sum with an integral. So we'll pull the pi out. We're integrating from 0 to 3, the area of the big circles, which are a constant 36, minus the area of the whole, which is 6 minus 2x quantity squared. We're going to do all that with respect to x. We can go to our calculator again, type that integral in, and check my math, but I got 72 pi. Okay, one more. This time now, we're rotating around the line y equals 8. And this is interesting, because before, y equals 6 was technically one of the boundaries. It, it, it touched that top corner of the right triangle. Here now, we're almost floating the region above a certain line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that line first. And again, notice, I'm doing rough sketches here. Okay, so we'll draw the line y equals 8 there. Okay, so I'll draw my y equals 2x, y equals 0, x equals 3. Now when I go to rotate, there's even more white space in between my two regions, the original right triangle and the reflected one. Okay, and let me just relabel. We got y equals 2x here. We've got y equals 0 there. And we have x equals 3 here. Okay, so again, I'll uh, highlight my solid. I'm rotating it around the line y equals 8. So let's think about what our circles will look like. So we connect yellow to yellow, that's our outer circle. We connect black to black, that's our inner circle. And it's a washer. This part that I'm highlighting is actually solid stuff. The middle part is a hole. So we need to come up with what are our two radii. All right, so again, we'll get the big circle. So the big circle is centered at y equals 8, and it comes all the way down to y equals 0, so that length will always be 8. Now we think about the radius of the smaller black circle. Again, the center is at 8. It goes down to 2x, so 8 minus 2x is the radius of the smaller circle. So our volume is going to be pi times the integral from 0 to 3 of 64 minus the quantity 8 minus 2x quantity squared dx. I'm running out of room on my screen. And that one is going to be 108 pi. Now the last three, it gets really interesting. 
Now, if we look at letter D, now we're going to rotate along the y-axis. So let's take a look at our picture. So we'll draw a rough sketch again. This time I'm using both the first and second quadrant when I draw my grid because I know that i got to flip on the other side of the y-axis. So quadrant 2 is now in play. All right, I'm trying to use my same color scheme. So I've got y equals 2x. I've got y equals 0. And I have x equals 3. So now here's my region, two-dimensionally. I am rotating this around the y-axis. So now our mirror image will look a little something like this. There's y equals 2x is rotational image. There's x equals 3. There's y equals 0. And we can fill it in just to see how the solid looks. Okay, now when I rotate it this way, if I am going to go in to take a knife cut, my knife cut now is going to be, instead of being perpendicular to the x-axis, my knife cut is going to be perpendicular to the y-axis. I'm going to be drawing something that looks sort of like this. Red to red. And black to black. Since we are cutting perpendicular to the y-axis, this is going to end up being a dy problem. Because think about how we're summing up all these washers now. We're stacking them on top of the y-axis. So the thickness of each washer's disk, or each washer or each disk, would be dy, because we're going up the y-axis. And we're going up it from 0 to 6. And I got the 6 because I know that's where these two lines, the black and the red, intersect at, at uh, 3 comma 6. So we are drawing a bunch of, and I'll draw a couple more just so you can see the idea, and I don't want to clutter the picture too much, but and I'll draw a really low one and a really high one. We're drawing these vertically up the y-axis. Okay, so since we are writing this dy, it's important that we take every equation and write each equation, if it's not already written, in terms of y. So that would be our black equation that we have to mess around with. We have to rewrite y equals 2x in terms of y, because otherwise, when we do our lengths, we're going to have two different variables in our integral. So if we divide both sides by 2, we get y over 2 equals x. So that's what I'm going to use now when I use the black line. Okay, so I need two radii. I have my longer, my... Um, my bigger circle in red, it looks like it always goes from 3 to 0. So my big circle has radius 3. And it looks like my black circle goes from the line to the y-axis. So that would be y over 2 minus 0. So my little radius will now be y over 2. So the volume is going to be pi times the integral not from 0 to 3 like the last three examples, but the integral from 0 to 6, because my limits of integration now are going up the y-axis, the area of the big circles, which are 9, minus the quantity of y over 2 squared. That's our little circle, dy. And then that value would be 36 pi. Okay, let's try the next one. Now we are rotating on the line x equals 3. So here's the line x equals 3. That is part of our region. That was that red line. So I'll draw it in red. Got our line. y equals 2x. And we've got the horizontal line y equals 0. Okay, so when we rotate along the line x equals 3, it overlaps. And we get basically this cone. Since we're rotating it around the line x equals 3 now, we end up with a nice solid, there's no hole in here, it's a nice solid cone. So this goes back to being a disk. So when we take our slice, we go from black to black. But now, again, our slices are going to run perpendicular to the y-axis.
So we have to make this a dy problem again. And we have to think as well about what our radius will be. So if we start at the center, which is 3, and we go out to the edge of the circle, which would be y over 2, because we've got to have both of these as x equals equations. We have x equals 3 and x equals y over 2. The radius of the disk would be 3 minus y over 2. So the volume would just be the collection of all those areas of the circles, and we would accumulate them from 0 to 6 again, because we're going up the y-axis, the quantity 3 minus y over 2 squared dy, and that would equal 18 pi. Okay. Now we're going to do the line x equals 4. So this is another one where we kind of have that, that floating of the two regions. They don't really connect. So I'll draw my um, line of rotation first. We'll put it about there. Because we know we have the line x equals 3 here. And then y equals 2x is there. And y equals 0 is here. Okay, now we'll look at the rotation. So again, we're not directly beside the line x equals 4. We're one unit over. There's our line y equals 2x is rotation or reflection. And there's y equals 0. All right, so here's our solid, what I'm highlighting. All right, so we make a cut. I think you can see, again, this has to be a dy problem because in order to get a washer, we're slicing perpendicular to the y-axis. Okay. Draw a couple slices so you can see. All right, so we need to come up with our two radii. So we are at x equals 4 here. We'll go out to the black. This is the equation y equals 2x, but we established it's better to write it as 1 half y or y over 2 equals x. So our bigger radius will be 4 minus 1 half y. Our smaller radius in red starts at 4 and then goes over to the line x equals 3. So it's just 4 minus 3 or 1. So that would mean the area of one of these washers would be pi times the quantity 4 minus y over 2 squared minus 1. So if we go to find the volume, we're going to integrate that area. Again, we're going up the y-axis, so we're going from 0 to 6. So the quantity of 4 minus y over 2 squared, our big radius, minus 1, our small radius, dy, and into the calculator, into the uh, yeah, calculator it goes, and 36 pi is our volume. Okay? All right, let's look at one more um, advanced set. So I'm on page 216. I'm looking at number 4. I'll just look at A, B, and C for these. The reason why it's advanced is because I have two functions as my... Um, borders, and a lot of times on the AP exam, that is what they'll ask. They'll either ask for the area between two curves, and then they'll ask you to rotate them. Usually they're not going to give you a horizontal or a vertical line like the first couple. Those were just to get you used to the mechanics of setting this up. So we're going to deal with the region bounded by y equals x squared and y equals the cube root of x. So you may need to go to your calculator and plot these two to realize which one is the higher function, where do they intersect. Um, they're going to intersect at 1, 1, because 1 squared is 1, and the cube root of 1 is 1. So we know that for sure, but we may need to come up with, you know, which one's going to be higher than the other one from 0 to 1. If you didn't have a calculator, you could just plug a value in, um, and you could do a half squared. Well, that's a quarter, and the cube root of a half, I believe, is larger. So we end up with the cube root of x will be up here, and y equals x squared, the parabola, you get a different color, will be right here. 
And again, as I told you before, this intersection point is 1, 1. So if we're rotating this on the x-axis, now we can draw our mirror images. So there's our cube root of x. And there's our x squared. It almost looks like a, a tulip here. So if we go in and I make a cut, we connect black to black, but we have to also connect red to red, and we see that this is a washer, because again, it's the region in between that's getting rotated. So that's why we have that white space in the middle. So I need my two radii. So my outer radius is in black, so it starts at the cube root of x, it goes down to the x-axis, so that would be just the cube root of x minus zero, or the cube root of x. My red radius starts at x squared, it again goes down to the x-axis, which is y equals zero, so my little radius is x squared minus zero, or just x squared. So that means the area of one cross-section is pi times the cube root of x squared minus pi times x squared squared. We can pull out the pi, we can combine the two um, radii, and we get pi cube root of x squared minus x squared squared. That would be the area of one of these circles. But now if we're taking the volume, we need to accumulate that from 0 to 1 along the x-axis because we're drawing more and more cuts going across the x-axis and we're summing them together. So our volume would be pi times the integral from 0 to 1, cube root of x squared minus x squared again squared, all of that dx. This one would definitely be something you probably need your calculator for. When I used mine, I got 0.4 pi. Okay, let's use the exact same region, but this time let's rotate it along the y-axis. Okay, as we've done before, since I have some sense of how this is going to flip, I'm going to draw both the first and second quadrants. All right, I'm going to try to use the same color scheme. So here's my cube root of x. Here's x squared. Again, I know kind of where that intersection point was. It's at 1, 1 and this time we are rotating about the y-axis so we'll draw our mirror image and there we go and let's just label the curves again so we have our equations the black is the cube root of x the red is x squared so we'll cut and as we cut this is very different now because my outer circle is now the red circle. My inner circle is now the black circle. That's one difference, so our capital R and little r using your notation from your binder is going to reverse. Here's the other thing. As I cut, and I'm summing all these circles, how am I cutting? I'm cutting perpendicular to the y-axis again. So here we go. We have a dy problem. So we need before we even set up an integral and figure out our lengths of our radii, we need to put these equations in x equals form. So for the first equation, y equals cube root of x, if you cube both sides, you know that y cubed equals x. And for the red equation, if you take the square root of both sides, you would get root y equals x. So we're going to use y cubed for the black, and we're going to use root y for the red for this problem. Okay. So, if we are going to find out our lengths, we start at the square root of y function, the red function, and we go out to the center, which is at zero. So now my big radius is going to be the square root of y. My smaller black circle, we start at y cubed, and we go out to the center, which is at zero. So that will be y cubed. So then that would mean the area of one of these circles would be pi times root y squared for the black, or sorry, for the red, minus y cubed squared for the inner function. So if we take the volume, we're going to accumulate up the y-axis. So again, 
the limits of integration is 0 and 1. That's just a coincidence, as you saw in other examples. The limits do change if you change which um, axis you're integrating with respect to. So we've got root y squared minus y to the sixth. I'm just doing the properties of exponents right there. Save myself from writing parentheses dy. And you could even do the same thing here with root y squared. It's just y minus y to the sixth dy. And my calculator to three decimal places said this was 0.357 times pi. Okay, so now let's rotate this same region around the line y equals 1. Okay, so our line y equals 1, we'll draw that. And that was also, as you remember, that was where these two regions intersect. So there's 1. Okay, so we've got our cube root of x function and our square root of x function. So now if we're rotating it around that yellow line, got something like this, and something like that would be our mirror image. Here's our shaded region. So let's get some slicing of this figure. So we go from red to red. That's going to be our outer circle. Black to black. That's going to be our inner circle. Let's label equations again because I forgot to do that. So the black we said was the cube root of x. And the red was x squared. Okay, so good news. I don't have to convert anything in the equations because all my slices are perpendicular to the x-axis, so this is a dx problem, and we already have our two functions in terms of x, so we're good to go. But now we're using the line y equals 1, so we've got to be a little careful with our radii. So if we start with the red, we go top to bottom, the center down to x squared, so the big radius is 1 minus x squared. Okay. Now if we do the black circle, so center down to the cube root of x. So our little radius is 1 minus the cube root of x. So this ends up looking like a very messy integral. Okay? This one you'd have to be very careful about when you evaluate it in your calculator. So our volume is going to be pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of the big circle's radius squared, which is 1 minus x squared, close parentheses, squared, minus the small circle, 1 minus the cube root of x, squared, dx. And I'm going to put brackets around the whole thing so we know that that whole thing is in the integral. And in my calculator, I get 0.433 pi. Okay? Um, I hope this gave you a little bit more of examples to do. Please do the homework assignments that I've assigned for these problems. Feel free to rewatch these, and we will try our best to catch up with all this in class when we're together again. Um, thank you again for watching, and have a great day.